So you forked out a lot of money on some nice speakers, but they're not sounding as good as you thought they would. There could be a few reasons why, but one reason they might not be sounding good is because they're being put at a disadvantage in the playing environment. In this video, former DTS sound engineer Brian Slack gives some pointers on why sprucing up your surrounding area is important to maximizing your audio experience. An important but often overlooked part of enjoying a movie at home is soundproofing the room that has your TV and speakers in it. When soundproofing is mentioned, it often conjures up images like this. But you don't have to remodel a home or spend thousands of dollars to enjoy a more pure and accurate audio experience from your couch. There is a difference between soundproofing and sound dampening. Sound dampening is actually what we'll be covering in this video since it's what most of us will be doing in our home or apartments. Soundproofing means a room is impervious to letting in and letting out any sound. It can involve putting in sound insulation in the walls and sealing it with special glues to further prevent the transmission of sound. It can also include hanging up heavy curtains or specially made acoustic panels. Combined, these methods with others help keep sound from leaking out. You've actually seen this before and may not have realized it. When you go to a movie theater auditorium, you'll see much of the floor is carpeted and sometimes that carpet goes up the walls. The walls will also have heavy fabric curtains hanging down to absorb sound waves. Additionally, theaters like Dolby Cinema and IMAX and other premium brands ensure the walls in their auditoriums have sound insulation stuffed inside to help prevent sound leakage. Since that level of treatment can be costly and time consuming, we'll stick with sound dampening, which is where you take sound absorption materials and you reduce the amount of sound waves bouncing around in a room. I've always been a firm believer that 90% of any sound system is the room it's in. So, you know, you can take a pretty mediocre sound system and put it in a great sounding room and it's going to sound pretty good. On the other hand, you could spend all the money in the world and put it in my living room and it's going to sound miserable. You know, my living room is all lath and plaster. I've got a brick fireplace in the corner, a giant window, two huge openings. It's just not an ideal place for a sound system. So you kind of get what you get in some rooms. So for me, like I'm a sound professional and I just choose not to spend a bunch of money on my sound system in that room. So I have another room where I do, you know, so you want like a nice, relatively symmetrical room, you know, and, uh, and there's two different parts to uh, uh, sound work in your room. One is isolation, the other one's insulation. So isolation, meaning the amount of sound that will either get in or out of the room, and pretty much the only two ways to take care of that is with air and density. So you can put hallways, gaps, things like that in your walls, but that generally can, uh, is requires a lot of construction or other funding that like may not be possible where you're living if it's an apartment or something. Uh, the other being just raw density, adding more stuff to the walls. So, uh, so that can be, you know, the classic, you know, high school garage band taking some carpet and you know, tacking it to your walls and hope for the best or like the egg crates and so on. But really modern insulation isn't really a whole lot different. So you can actually buy some pretty nice sound panels, even on uh, uh, Amazon or eBay, um, uh, uh, you know, a lot of different companies uh, uh, around on the internet, you know, will sell you prefab uh, uh, panels that are both uh, either corner base traps or wall isolation and really it's about having you know this uh, uh, what people used to call the uh, hard soft thing so or hard wall soft wall so a lot of music studios were built that uh, uh, for a long time where you'd have a really soft absorbent wall opposite sort of a harder wall and then do that in the back and maybe have sections of the walls so your room was completely dead it still wants to be interesting you know something as simple as like a rug or carpet is obviously going to help you a lot you know people help you know like the moment you put three or four or five people in a small room they eat up a lot of sound uh, furniture you know, having a nice soft sofa you know helps out a lot you know it's like rather than having rolling chairs or something like that um, and yeah, it doesn't take a lot of money, but you can actually do something pretty nice, but definitely putting something on the walls, specifically your back wall is going to help you a lot because obviously everything's coming off the speakers and, you know, uh, you know, if you've got a TV in front of you, first thing it's going to do is slap off that back wall and create a lot of reflections because, you know, if you've got a big 80 inch TV there, it is a giant piece of glass. So if you have sound going off your back wall and then bouncing right off that TV, you're going to get a lot of reflections that way. So. Minimizing a lot of that stuff by uh, softening your back wall, softening the side walls, putting some rug in, something simple, 
and you know, a nice soft sofa or like a lot, a lot of diffuse material. Believe it or not, even a bookshelf helps a lot. You know, just a lot of uh, random stuff. If you uh, go into any studios and you see these wood patterns on the wall, you know, that's no special material. A lot of times it's made out of MDF or just cheap plywood. It's just having the random reflections will help out the, uh, uh, the sound quite a bit. On your front wall, probably your best bet, like especially if you have a, uh, uh, your subwoofers or your main speakers up there, things like what are called corner wedges or bass traps on the front wall will actually help a lot with evening out the bass response throughout the room. The few tricks that Brian mentions can greatly enhance the overall sound experience when watching a movie. Even if you have a cheap sound bar, you should notice an improvement in your sound experience just by placing a rug on the hard floor or having up a few strategically placed sound panels on the walls. The sound waves being absorbed versus traveling along and bouncing off of hard surfaces can make all the difference between understanding dialogue and hearing objects from your speakers to hearing muffled voices and missing the action. If you've experimented with sound dampening in your home, tell me about your experience in the comment section below. This is Movie University, education and cinema.